www.ghostscore.org. I wasn't talking at all. Oh, right from the beginning? Yes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's SCORE Fairfield County's live webinar on using social media to grow your business, best practices, and newest tools. I'm Alan Rosenberg, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County. I'll be your host. Our presentation today will be by Kate Berg. More on Kate in a minute. First, some brief information on SCORE. With 320 offices and 11,000 volunteers nationally, SCORE started in the mid-60s as part of the SBA. SCORE Fairfield County has 130 volunteers with a wide range of industry process and subject matter expertise. We offer three primary value-added services to small business owners. One-on-one -on -one counseling, which is face-to-face, -face, telephone, email, and Skype. Educational workshops and webinars, as we're doing this evening. And extensive resources on our website, including a network of subject matter experts at your disposal. Our next webinar is on Tuesday, August 6th, when Catalano and Clark will present Digital Marketing Maze. Look for specifics on the Fairfield County SCORE.org website. And for free individual counseling, go to SCORE website and click on Request a Mentor. Some useful information about today's event. We have set aside time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation. If you have a question, please use the chat window at any time during the presentation. It's located in the lower left portion of your screen. Our webinar will end sharply at 6.30 to respect your time. The session is being recorded, and a link to the recording will be available at fairfieldcounty.score.org within the next couple of days. Now, some information on Kate. Kate has 25 plus years of technology and strategic marketing experience focusing on helping companies grow public and secure VC funding. Serial entrepreneur, the last company Kate ran became a leader in the influencer marketing space and was sold for $100 million in 2016. Kate's deep, experience, Kate's deep experience in content and influencer marketing and is passionate about helping entrepreneurs succeed. In her new venture, Nomi Culture, Kate and her team are developing a community of professionals who want to increase their digital influence through social channels and real-world marketing. I'll now turn it over to Kate. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're all doing well this evening and that you can hear me okay. I know there have been some sound issues a few people have commented on, so let's hope that you're tuning in to me and hear my voice well, and let's get underway. So I wanted to just spend a minute and uh, expound a little bit on Alan. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, and tell you a little bit about um, my background and help you um, understand where I'm coming from in my experience. Um, uh, one second, can you see that? So over the last 25 or so years, I have been uh, really spending, I've been uh, nur nursing a, an unnatural uh, obsession with uh, mobile, social, and tech, anything that's coming down the pike that really uh, brings new opportunities to help small businesses grow and really compete with uh, larger businesses. And uh, most of the time in media we hear about um, small businesses and Main Street getting clobbered by some of the, the large large players out there, but, but I contend there's a real, uh, always fresh and, and exciting opportunities for us, uh, small opportunities for, uh, sorry, uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs to uh, better their games and learn new skills and tactics to, uh, to grow business uh, with, 
with not a ton of resources, sometimes uh, very, very uh, competitively, very inexpensively. So um, in, in that vein, I'd love to try and help you understand some, uh, some things that we'll cover during this session that will be at a high level, some of them, which will be strategic in nature to help you think maybe a little more deeply or differently uh, about uh, some of the uh, tactics and, and uh, our opportunities out there, and then some takeaway tactics and ideas. The deck I'm happy to send to, uh, to, to anyone who wants it at the end. And please do share um, thoughts uh, over the period of time, and I can um, entertain some uh, Q&A. So we'll talk a little bit about CX. CX is something you're going to see more and more uh, in the years ahead as the customer is the central focus for commerce. Uh, because uh, for a lot of reasons that we'll talk about, um, but your CX is something that you should really be trying to improve uh, and think about uh, from uh, the point of view of a prospect and, and not your internal um, you know, business as usual operator mode. Try and think about the customer's journey with you from uh, calling you, checking your website, uh, encountering you in search and so forth. And some of that really relates to the next bullet, which is reviews and, and how people interact with you, your business, and respond to you, and, and they have a tendency to share their views. We all do as consumers share our views if, uh, if asked and sometimes if not. So, so some of these, uh, these things will really uh, be important and will be uh, critical for your success down the road if they, if they aren't even already today. So number one, um, really this slide has to do with uh, mobile search and, and why people uh, or how people are using search um, in their daily, uh, yes, oh, gotcha, sorry guys, um, how they're using their mobile phones as, they, as we all do. If you're jumping in the car and you're going down and, and, or you're on the streets and, and heading towards somewhere, a large number of, uh, of local searches are resulting in purchases that very same day. And so why I bring this up is that it, it's really important to focus on some technical aspects of your, um, of your business, like, your, your, uh, for example, your page load speed. And Google actually uh, suggests a, uh, under a two-second load time uh, for your website. And obviously we are... Um, talking about a site that I'm assuming now in 2019 is mobily responsive. And if you are looking at the, this slide and saying, gee, I'm not sure mine is, you, you know, that's something that has to be first on your list. Make sure your, your site is mobily responsive and that your load time is, is, is um, quite fast. Uh, mobile searches are, these searchers are more likely to make a local buying decision, and that's, you want to put yourself in, that, in the path for success. 53% um, of mobile users will abandon uh, a website that takes longer than three seconds to load. So that seems, uh, that seems like um, uh, something that should be first priority for you. Um, also, um, you know, in response, to, in speaking about CX, customer experience, it really uh, is important for you to um, allow your customer to find out all the information to in, uh, to uh, build their own knowledge base, not to just push at them and, and expect them to buy like they did yesterday. Don't be annoying or intrusive in your marketing. Really be very educational. This is why today's hot topic in marketing is content marketing and influencer marketing. These are two subjects that uh, marketers uh, read a lot about now, and it, it is because we as the customer educate and buy uh, now, not the other way around. So you probably have noticed um, as a business owner or a prospective business owner uh, how semantic search uh, has made uh, Google and the other search engines um, quite a lot more um, easy to use in that you don't have to try two or three times anymore. You really are almost always going to find what you need in your first opportunity. Maybe we're learning as humans how to search 
more specifically and be more definitive in how we uh, ask questions. But in any case, the results are that they're very accurate and very uh, simple and easy uh, to find what you need. Now, the marketers, uh, the reason I bring this up to you all is that you um, – the algorithm is it's important to be conversational in your copy and in your social um, any text that you put out there on your business and about what you're doing so uh, for example you know when you're talking to your clients it might be good to jot down the exact language that they use um, and use that for your website copy. So, for example, a nutritionist uh, might hear her client say, I just want to live more healthy, I want to have a healthier life and gain control of my body. Um, you, so as a marketer, you might want to use that language specifically in your social posts and website copy because this is how your clients are talking about themselves, you'll notice, not your services. They're talking about what pain point they want to solve in their lives. And so I would put on your, your um, you know, your, your, put in your, you know, your listening ears and really focus on what and how people are talking about them. Also mention the town uh, that, that, you know, so for example, Beth, my newest client from Stanford now, uh, she loves how easy it is to stick to her new uh, ex-nutrition program. She doesn't get bored uh, which has been a problem with diets for her in the past. Um, regional and local specificity also uh, help your search engine uh, optimization further. So you might might mention the area in uh, in your references. So you know one small note about uh, talking about it from the point of view of your client. You know, when people talk about brands, a brand is really about how others think about your business. This is the impression that your prospects or customers uh, have formed based on what's out there and the impressions that they, they uh, gather. So you have control over that, but you do have to tend it like a, like a garden. So on that point, I might suggest to you that you do a digital audit on a quarterly basis just to – uh, see how you're showing up and, and look at your brand name and your company name and, and also then generically search on on your your sector, your your industry um, to see who's popping up as competitive um, uh, individual uh, businesses against you. Who's there that didn't used to be there you might not know about um, or who's always been there and maybe you look at and see how they're doing things. There's nothing wrong with comparing notes on on uh, best practices. Uh, so in any case, um, I, I think you, you've gotten the gist on that. On uh, the middle bullet is, is talking about claiming your, your business page. Google business page is actually quite simple. If you Google that term, uh, you will come across um, a form that you can fill out uh, that Google has, and you will just need to basically uh, validate where you are and where your business is located and the legal name of that business. And you can uh, check the option to have um, <clears throat> a postcard will come in the mail to you that will uh, ask you to verify that by putting a code in. And that's an important uh, task to check off the list because uh, if you think about in this hour, we'll be talking about a bunch of different tactics. All of these things uh, serve to place you uh, in the digital space, just like you might put signs on a highway um, to say, come to my store. All of these things help um, the search engines really help the client find you, know you, learn about your services, and uh, build a complete picture. So um, in coming into uh, one of the things we really we titled this session, uh, you know, social media helping dri driving and building your business. So really you want to think uh, if you are, I'm sure, using social um, I, I think one of the most important things that I advise uh, business owners is don't try and do everything and do not start something and then drop it. If you're going to use um, a social networking site, a, um, a platform, hold on one second. Okay. Okay. Um, if you're going to use a platform, uh, 
make a plan and and build a uh, what I would call an editorial or a content calendar and stay uh, consistent with that. And and this is wide widely heard in in this uh, area. Be consistent with your posting habits, um, and you you know if you may pick one or two platforms that are most appropriate for your prospect audience and for the type of uh, service you have or product that you sell. Um, so, uh, you know, Instagram, for example, you, you could hit 78% of your population from, uh, from the age of 25 to 50. You, you would reach about 75% of the population. That, that's the age groups that are on it. Obviously, it skews a little younger, but there's a decent chunk of people uh, in the age group of 35 to 50 on there as well and growing all the time. Uh, having said that, Instagram is obviously a very visual uh, platform and so will be important uh, you know, to match what you do with the platform. Uh, business to business, uh, say an IT consultant, um, LinkedIn would be a terrific place. I'm not saying Instagram would not work. Um, but you know some some places may prove more fruitful for you than others. Um, YouTube is is a fantastic option. I think sometimes uh, we forget. Um, you know YouTube is is just been growing gangbusters and uh, for specifically for uh, products and services and and people using it to sell uh, online and. People are building entire courses online and being able to build businesses out of their expertise in a certain specific area. Uh, I'd be interested to hear if anybody has experience, had experiences with TikTok. It's a rather new one. Uh, it's a video platform. Um, so which platform? I'm seeing a question over here. Um, which platforms would you recommend for a nonprofit? I, I think it really largely depends on um, what type of uh, nonprofit you run. Certainly you should have, uh, in my view, a LinkedIn uh, page for your nonprofit as a very fun, uh, foundational uh, point. Uh, I have seen uh, nonprofits use Facebook extremely uh, successfully, uh, and I have also seen YouTube uh, employed by nonprofits. The beautiful part about some of these are they are they can be low cost uh, in that you can have an organic strategy and that you that you um, uh, augment and complement with uh, some paid advertising. You may have a smaller budget being a nonprofit, but the good thing about these platforms is you can control that budget spend and it can be very small. It can be very targeted uh, as well, which helps you keep it under under control in terms of uh, budget spend. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about stories in a minute, but Instagram stories are really getting uh, a great deal of attention uh, lately. And, and I think uh, the reason why is that they're very easy, very visual, uh, to obviously to use. The user doesn't have to do anything. Uh, they're just appearing at the top of their feed. They're fun to browse, and, they're, and for a, a marketer, it's also actually pretty easy to do. Uh, you don't, you know, you could find a tutorial online, but actually, it's pretty easy to just poke around and figure it out. Um, and you can convey your brand and product, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Flavor, if you will, the type of, you know, you can really uh, um, create an energy about your brand uh, well on stories and create engaging elements by using music and a lot of things uh, are possible there, it's, you know, sort of sticker-like elements on stories. They're a lot of fun. Um, the other thing I want to mention about stories is you can really create uh, maximum opportunity for interaction. And this is, this is why you're on social. Uh, it's not to broadcast out in a one-way method. It's really to create conversation and build relationships with uh, many people efficiently. And so I have uh, a, an entrepreneur that I know, he uses stories to ask opinions about very kind of almost current event topics that are of interest to his audience. He's in his early 20s. And he asks many cultural questions about dating. And it's so interesting. And then he will share out these opinions um, from individual 
users on stories so that as a user you can see the whole dialogue that's coming uh, that that's forming on on a series of stories that he runs and uh, it really helps him build um, engagement and community uh, as well as his brand personality all with that one tactic so I would encourage you to invest in working harder uh, to learn that particular um, new offering the stories and and so I'll talk a little bit more about that now and back up you know my urging you to use it is over half a billion people are using it every single day. And, and this was a, a ripoff from Snap that Instagram did a number of years ago, and they've just been crushing it. And um, so what they are, if you're not familiar, is just a short disappearing story. Uh, they're 15 seconds long. And, and I think what, you know, what is important, you know, obviously it's, it's fun for the average consumer user and kid, young and old, but for a marketer, it, it's a way to be sort of very culturally relevant and go where the eyeballs are and also to show that brand personality. I mean, brands are a lot more human now. If you have noticed in your travels, um, brand uh, website copy is a lot more uh, plain speaking, a lot more human to human. So is recorded, you know, uh, v, what do they call it, voice response units on, uh, you know, banking and all the things that we're doing. And that uh, is just, uh, it's just a broad trend. It's a macro trend. And so if you take a objective look at your website and it hasn't been updated in a while and it's a little stiff, maybe it looks a little dated, it's too formal in its in its style, it would pay to update that and, and bring it up to um, kind of today's vibe. I'm going to go on to the next slide. <laughs> one second. No, I want to be on that one. Okay. Thank you. So, you, t you know, so if, if you're afraid to kind of go it on your own, Search YouTube how to make Instagram stories like a pro. I did this just for you know to be able to, to talk to you guys, and they have amazing tutorials, short ones, long ones. You could become an expert yourself in one evening. Um, there were a couple really cool ones, and the editing apps were things that I wasn't really thinking about. But if you don't want to just use your built-in, you know, iPhone or Android camera, um, there. There are some great editing apps. Uh, they're either free or just a couple bucks, and there are two that I've listed here, LumaFusion and PowerDirector. Um, and those are, you know, those are some ways for you to get really smart on that quickly. TikTok is the social media in which people make very short skits and videos. It's meant to be funny and entertain people who <laughs> who are teenagers. <laughs> I've also heard that it's being used, TikTok is kind of being used in the, in different trades uh, for, um, it's almost like, it's almost like office gossip or inside baseball for people in the construction trade or all different kinds of, 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 of trades. And it's funny because when these social networking platforms get built, they're often used differently than the makers intended uh, because people just adopt them and, and kind of hijack them, <laughs> which is cool. So anyway, I came across this not too long ago. <clears throat> Later's a company, great URL, great domain, right, later.com. Um, and I found this article, How to Use Instagram Stories for Business by Lexi Carbone. And this company is kind of like a hoot suite for this particular platform for Instagram. So it will help you kind of build out your plan for your week and do the um, do the, the, the stuff that you may not have time to do. Because this is a constant refrain when I talk to small businesses that they understand they need to be doing this. We know uh, maybe some of the basics or maybe we're really good at it. We're just really struggling with uh, time constraints. I do think two things. One is use tools like Hootsuite and perhaps this one. I haven't had personal experience on it, but I thought I'd share it with you. Um, I also think, you know, the better able, you, you know, better and more versatile you are on these um, and agile you are on these platforms, it's going to become part of your ritual of your day, and you will not 
be struggling as much. It won't take as much time. So, so try and you know build those tactical skills. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's absolutely freezing in this office, and that's why my voice sounds like this. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, Facebook. So I'm sort of tongue-in-cheek saying, um, don't we hate them now? Because obviously there's been a bunch of roiling news stories over the last couple years, and Facebook's um, you know, strategic shifts into private messaging and now uh, hold your hat cyber currency uh, are really a reflection of their uh, in continued battering in the in the area of privacy, um, but for the time being, they maintain their their supremacy at two billion users around the world as an ad platform, as a social platform. Um, certainly, cannot say that it you know you should abandon. Uh, I don't have a great vibe on Facebook, but that doesn't mean it isn't a fantastic place to to really build your business. Um, for the reasons I outline here is that you can augment your organic strategy, you can target like crazy and really just you could target down to a handful of people because it is so specific. So that works for a lot of businesses that many other ways of advertising are a waste of money. Um, so that's a great, you know, a good endorsement for giving them uh, your continued uh, efforts. I've had some some people say it hasn't worked for them, and I've had some entrepreneurs really doing well with uh, with spending, and you can control that budget, change it as, as you go along. One thing I would say for those who have not had success, I would invite you to ask for help from Facebook's ad team. They are pretty substantial in the small business uh, area now, and you can get someone on the phone, believe it or not. And so I would also say video is an important thing you should be exploring and um, testing. And be more um, – don't be afraid to do stuff that doesn't work. Don't, don't wait for – what's that expression? Don't let perfect be the en- – is that right? Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. <laughs> so do some stuff. Marketing today – digital marketing is all about iteration. Iteration, learning, taking in information, altering your tactics – maybe changing your strategy altogether if your business is shifting or growing and keep moving forward. Um, so that's what I have to say about that. So in the topic of reviews, um, we are, you know, really, we're well into the peer-to-peer age now. Um, consumers visit an average of six websites before they've even tripped over yours. So they're really well uh, versed on what you're doing or what your, you know, area, your, you know, your industry is doing in any case. And four out of five consumers read online reviews um, before making a purchase. And you might say, well, why do they need to do that? I've got all this great information on my on my social and on my website because they don't want to rely on you <laughs> about what you have to say about your brand or your product if they can find out from others. And it is, you know, we only have to look at our own consumer behavior to know this to be true. Um, your eye is trained to look down your phone or your laptop and find those stars if you're about to go to that restaurant. And if you don't see any digital presence for a business that you're thinking about giving money to, you have a red flag or at least a yellow flag. You're wondering why that is. And, um, and it's, you know, this is, if you, you know anybody in the HR f- space, this is becoming, you know, f- forget checking out a person's reputation. They have to have a presence now on multiple platforms in order to sort of <laughs> pass muster. So this, this is well beyond mainstream. So you can imagine that your reviews, the echoes in the marketplace about you, about your business are, are going to become, are important now and increasingly important going on. Some people in small business or maybe you have a franchise business, big business, um, uh, would say, oh, there's so much hacking going on. There's so many fraudulent reviews. That is not the point. Uh, that may be true, but that unfortunately is not something you can really control. You need to be in the game and you need to maintain a vigilance about these reviews. You have to be responsive 
Um, that's the point of, of digital and social is that it is an interactive activity, and I know I'm repeating myself, but that's important to, to remember. Um, and so I would say to you um, that, you know, you can really make reviews work for you. Um, even if there's a, a negative review, if you respond very promptly to it, you will be rewarded for that because while we may rely on reviews uh, when we're doing business as consumers, as business uh, customers and consumers, um, we're also generous. We understand that um, some customers can be a large pain in the rear, and that is not necessarily a reflection on you. So people have a generous viewpoint, and they're savvy. Um, so just a couple of too many bullets. I won't bore you going through all of them, but you, you know, I would say in all the talk about social, do not forget about the all-important prospect client database. It's really, really important that you have that as a centerpiece uh, to your business and tend it um, uh, like a garden. And, and you know, a weekly email uh, as an anchoring element is still a really good idea. I've been doing uh, workshops and webinars for many years for SCORE, and I never stop recommending this because it is really important. And I would argue that mobile uh, mobile phones have made it an even more important element because I don't have to go into an office or into my home to lap, you know, to uh, what is it? I'm trying to remember to uh, turn on <laughs> log in my. Uh, computer to, and my email to, to see what you're doing. It takes two seconds. And so I, you can be in front of your prospects and clients really regularly with a, with a great email once a week. Don't bombard them. Um, but of course, once a week is just a guideline. I'm going to read a couple of comments over here. Um, what are you using with clients for editorial calendar? Yeah, I think con uh, Contently is a great one. I think uh, Asana could be more more trouble than it's worth. I don't know. Uh, I would love to hear other people's um, thoughts and shares on that particular point. And yes, Stephen, uh, Petri, I will be sharing this deck afterward. And um, uh, I will defer to Alan, the um, coordinator and the host of this webinar at the end, to understand the best practice for distribution of my deck. Um, so, you know, for sure you need, um, you need tools, and a lot of these tools are so affordable, Constant Contact and uh, um, Exact Target and, and uh, MailChimp really, really uh, have added so many fantastic features, and their prices have not really, you know, gone up crazy uh, given all of the value that you get out of it. Time, you know, is money for the small business. So... Uh, so build your content calendar and uh, stick with that. And uh, talk about, uh, you know, become habitually obsessed with what your co customers are, you know, feeling, doing, ha and share their stories out. And, uh, and that will, it will be uh, important. Now, you know, one thing I would say is that I, I often get sort of deer in the headlights responses from people when they realize that they have all this content they have to create. But remember, it's, it's visual uh, mostly. So, you know, uh, short video bites, great, great photos. You know, take some time to learn if you don't have good skills. Learn how to take a great photo. The cameras are so good. Um, and then just a few hundred words of copy, and that's only like a little paragraph. Um, and so, you know, uh, create visual content and, um, and help those people uh, uh, buy from you and be loyal to you. Um, I think that when we talk about making offers and kind of, you know, I wouldn't say bribing your clients into, into trying your services or your business, be, think creatively about that. Think about uh, early access to whatever you're doing, uh, special treatment, um, long-term membership type discounts or special access or treatment. Um, make them a member. Build community. Um, and then maybe what I would say here is ask your, ask your loyal customers what they think is a great benefit and use that relationship uh, building to do your market research. Don't guess at what people value most. Do some uh, survey. Survey Monkey is free uh, if you only build 10 questions. Um, they charge for a more complicated uh, survey tools, but they're free. It's a freemium model, so take advantage of that. Okay, so I'm going to move on. I am 
feeling that you are interested in MailChimp. This is brand new. Just a couple months ago, they um, – and I'm not endorsing these guys or anything like that. I just know this happened right before the uh, presentation I did in May, that they debuted a new integrated marketing platform for small and uh, medium-sized businesses, SMBs. So this, they're trying to get more of your marketing needs met with their one marketing platform. So give it a shot. Maybe there's a free trial. Probably is. Um, and you can, they have the re, um, retargeting, and they've got um, social posts, and they've got some great customer relationship management tools that I believe would be very affordable for any size business. Um, yeah, you know, I've been hearing. I'm looking at the uh, comments on this other side here on the side rather and uh i don't know eventbrite i'm i'm uh, i'm not sure apropos to what you're mentioning eventbrite i've certainly been a, a happy user of eventbrite over the years i uh, as a you know business uh consumer going to events that are posted there i think it's an excellent platform i think it you know it, it's great to use i think nextdoor.com has been growing in popularity i've heard it mentioned several times in the last few months i kind of think it you know it depends on the business if you're if you're a, a a plumber you know if you're i don't know i'm i think there are probably lots of folks that could use this well i just i'm not deeply familiar um with it so I'm going to carry on. So this is just hammering my point home about reviews. With um, uh, the blue, red, and yellow is um, – whoops, sorry, guys. Thank you. Uh, three different uh, stats from three different uh, well, uh, well um, – uh, respected uh, sources, Search Engine Land, that's a great, um, I think Sullivan runs that, um, Andrew Sullivan, uh, Vocus, which is like a, a news wire with a lot of extra stuff, and the third one, uh, Dimensional Research, I'm not really familiar with them. But this is just giving you guys some some um, uh, further validation on just how important um, social is and reviews are for your business. And then, of course, no social discussion would be complete without ragging on Yelp a little bit. Um, they <laughs> are are a troubling uh, – so I would just say that it's a love-hate relationship for most folks I know um, who are small businesses. And you really have to sort of play the Yelp game and make sure you respond uh, if there's a problem. Um, but, you know, what the one takeaway here for you – um, is because uh, customer service and the customer experience is so important. Um, uh, it, this is especially important site if you're in the in the food business, uh, in, you know, retail, restaurant, bar trade. Really, really important. And customer service, according to research, appears to have the biggest impact on how you get reviewed on this particular site. Um, illustrated by the last bullet there, every star in a review leads to, according to this research, five to nine percent jump in, in revenue. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I think um, what I would say here is, some folks that I've known over the years through Score have had trouble with Yelp, and most of the time they don't advertise with Yelp. And I'm not recommending that you do, but if you are concerned about your position there, you may choose or choose to decide to devote some budget dollars. Um, and speaking of which, um, you know, for in corporate marketing forever, uh, the rule of guideline for spending for your for marketing has been sort of 7 to 10 percent of your revenue, annual gross revenue. So that might help you think about I, I, what I have learned, I will tell you anecdotally over the years, is that I don't think a lot of small businesses spend enough to market and uh, market their businesses. I think you have to invest in your own business to help it grow. It will not necessarily grow just because you do a good job. Um, you got to tell people about it, and you got to build your your love, your community love. So you may need to spend more than you're spending. 
So this is going to be rapid. I'm, um, I have a, quite a few tactical items on here, which I thought were great, and I want you to take you know away from this things that you could apply right away. So don't try and you know scribble them down. Just you know we'll get the deck to you because these are great kind of um, ever, evergreen items. But CTA call to action have make an opportunity on your social postings and on your website for people to, to easily find out more or engage with you. Um, say thank you. That sounds obvious, but um, I have, I've been dealing with small businesses in the Connecticut area who are doing a terrific job doing that on text, on email. They have, there are services that will do this that will automate that, that are practically free. They're so cheap, and it is a beautiful thing. People like it. It's nice. It's a nice extra um, way to build, you know, build the relationship and obviously reach out and, and uh, help help people understand you're doing your best if something doesn't go well try and make it right with them reach out um, okay another few um, I'm, I, I'm actually I'm going to skip number one because that raised some confusing issues last time so I'm going to skip past that one um, the other one is if you have the type of business that you can face to face request a review data shows that um, that that it's seven times more effective than than requesting that review by email email will also work I don't know about you but I've gotten on Amazon some small vendors requesting that I give them a review because it's hard for them to compete out there in the big bad world. Um, but I guess my point here is that if you have an opportunity to interface directly, just ask them. People will do it. They want to be helpful. Uh, I would say that uh, rewards, incentives are also good. People are not above getting bribed for their effort because obviously as marketers work harder to do these things, um, that these tactics that I am sharing with you, we customers are getting more and more requests, right? How, who isn't getting a million like take our survey type requests? So be be brief, be re, you know, be, be clever, uh, use a sense of humor. I don't think enough marketers use a sense of humor. Um, television ads are one demonstration of just how well humor sells because there's millions and millions of dollars being put into national advertisements and if humor wasn't an effective tactic they wouldn't be using it so don't be afraid to show some personality um, okay next on our item here um, on our agenda here a few more so I've got about 15 minutes left um, so if you do get really great standout reviews, I would talk about those in your in your social. Um, you know, that's just another you know way of taking the point of view, the stories from your customers. Some people have some great and interesting stories that you may hear and take for granted. That kind of in your busy day goes in one ear and out the other. You're happy, but you're too busy moving forward to kind of take a um, note. So use your phone notes uh, app and quickly jot it down. And then on Sunday when you're, you know, watching football or whatever you're doing, you can then kind of plan your content and take those notes that you've jotted that week and, and just put them right back out there and share. And if uh, you're afraid of, like, somebody's identity, you don't have to use their name. You, you know, you can just say a client from Norwalk or whatever or Beth. Just use a first name. Um Timing, of course, people, you know, get it when they're happy. Get it quick right after the experience before they forget. American Express says that happy customers will, sh will tell nine other people about their experience. That's kind of an amazing stat. I've always heard that people, <laughs> the whole expression that bad news travels faster. I do know that to be true, that, uh, you know, a negative experience People will share it, but I th only if it's gone unaddressed if, or if it's handled badly. If a, a if a company makes a mistake and they are sincere in saying we've made a mistake, c customers, again, they will not hold it against you. So don't be afraid to say you're sorry. Um, I would say 
we can move on because I've got a couple more slides. So, so be this is harking back this next slide about being descriptive in your website copy is really pertaining to semantic search, and this really helps um, if you, how you know, more descriptive you can be, not wordy but clear and conversational, and how people really talk. So examine all of your your you know your brochureware as they say you know it's your digital footprint and take a look at how you're describing and make sure it's up to date and make sure it's crisp uh, writing useful posts so you know and, and this is really about content and um, and you're a thought leader and you may not think of yourself but you know more about what you're doing than anyone else so don't be afraid to share and give away you know your knowledge because that's not going to cost you anything uh, or if it does it will hopefully you know lead to uh, into paying business um, infographics are really a great tool uh, and there are all you have to do if you don't know how to make one is just search making an infographic, there are some terrific tools online. You just pop in a few little data points about something. And they, infographics can be very complicated or they can be very simple. The point of them is that they're fun to look at and people do look at them. Um, and it will give you an eye, you know, a moment of their time and you'll embed yourself in their brain. <laughs> so um, that's important and good to share on social. Um, Videos, I mean videos, if you have a complicated or instructional type business, videos are amazing and you should build a, a channel on YouTube, also super easy to set up. Um, and then that same content can be kind of serialized across Facebook and, um, and Instagram. Um, And um, another call to action is, you know, create a landing page. I think that's really important to ask people to share details. Um, and you see that tactic used a lot. If you can build a simple little guide for people and they get that in exchange for sharing information, do that. Um, I think I've talked about telling your customer stories, but people love them and they help you tell the story of your brand. Uh, you know, I would – I, I think a lot of times the stories should come from the customer uh, point of view. However, there are exceptions um, to times when you you can share yours. One is that there's a local chef here in Connecticut who's Italian and he's had a long career. He's uh, obsessive about his ingredients and the farmers markets and the actual farms that he uses in Connecticut for his restaurant. He's an artist, so he spends a lot of time telling stories on email and beautiful pictures that are evocative of the of the flavors and the and the passion that he puts into his food. So that to me is very engaging and he has real relationships with a large portion of his customers and I think it's because of that passionate approach that he takes to his business. So that's just a little kind of an ex not an exception, but if you can bring that to the table, don't be afraid to do it. And I want to thank you very much for, um, for participating tonight. We've got a great number on the line here, um, over 50 people. And, you know, if anybody um, has a question, we have a few minutes. Thank you, Kate. And we'll use the remaining time, as you mentioned, for questions and answers. And we'll take as many as possible. Um, I would like to also, as a reminder, uh, Stephen had asked about the material for the webinar. It will be available in a couple of days at the fairfieldcounty.score.org website. Okay, so uh, let's do a couple of other questions here. Um, Felicia. Felicia says, I understand the importance of reviews, but do you have any suggestions for a business preparing to launch? That who doesn't have reviews yet? Great question, Felicia. Uh, any views on launch parties if they're really necessary? We're launching a jewelry business, mobile jewelry making uh, party component. Part, uh, party component. Ah, gotcha. Well, I, I do have a great, uh, <clears throat> actually have experience with um, launch parties for a business that I started in social in 2004 and I, I I cannot recommend them more. I think it's a huge component for a business, a new business. In fact, I did three launch parties for because um, I wanted to ensure that I got a couple of different kind of demographics and so 
they, not all of them were lavish. One was a, a splashy one, and the other two were more casual. And they all happened within the first two weeks of the business. And the business did have – it was a social – um, you know, um, events business. So obviously that was an important thing. But I think they're huge, and I think that's an automatic way to start the ball rolling with your reviews, Felicia. So, for example, if you had a, a launch party, you you may um, collect, uh, you know, volunteers at that party to ask, you know, to be uh, early adopters, early fans of your business and give them something in exchange for saying, can you be, you know, can you review us and and let the people know, um, yes, we're new, but um, we attended a party and an event and we're looking forward to seeing more or something. It does not have to be substantive. These things grow over time and live on <laughs> online forever. So I think um, – that's one thing, and and obviously, you know, building that relationship with early beta customers, if you will, uh, is essential to kind of, you know, uh, getting that catch twenty two review issue addressed, Felicia. Um, so, what is a good cadence? Oops, that. Hold on one second. Uh, once a week enough. Uh, all right, let me go back here, Dave. What's a good cadence for short LinkedIn videos? Once a week? Oh, gosh, I think once a week is a perfect amount. I really do. I think uh, more would seem a little uh, hoggy. I think it would seem like you were you were trying to overtake my feed. I think once a week is great, and short also great. Um, what do you do about negative or false reviews? Yeah, Mark uh, Lindsay says, you know, it's it's a real conundrum for people. Uh, there are a couple of different tactics, um, uh, and if we're talking about Yelp specifically, I'm telling you being an advertiser will help resolve that problem. I won't go into the details here. Um, if you're talking about in general, um, there are people out there, there are companies out there that make their living helping push down poor, uh, you know, poor content that is negative about businesses, and I think the same goes, the same theory goes for reviews. So good content will eventually push down and push out bad content. It's not a perfect solution, um, but you know, addressing it head on, uh, taking ownership of the issue, it's crisis management 101. My background uh, back years ago was in PR, and that's part of the drill. You know, acknowledge the mistake, be honest about it and direct, take responsibility and correct, you know, offer corrective measures. So you need to do all those block and tackle things, but then just, just make sure you do, you know, get good reviews and, you know, one or two negative ones won't sink you. Um, they, can they be taken down? You know, it, again, it's a long, if you're talking about Yelp, which is the one I know about, it, it's a battle. And if you are an advertiser, the answer is probably yes. If you're not new, you will not be able to get them to take it down. Um, so Colleen, Kathleen, sorry, Kathleen Blood, I'm trying to create videos for cross-platform use. What's the length that is most useful? Google is my, uh, my business limits videos to 30 minutes. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm ta I, I would really err on the side of brevity for a video. I really would not be, people like to snack. And, and they do not want to sit through your talking head, you know, thing for an hour like you're doing listening to me. <laughs> no, I would say you really, you really want to do like, gosh, I would l love a five-minute video. I mean, unless you're really instructing, but then you can break it up and chapterize it, and you don't have to do it all at once. Two minutes is even. Budley is Bud here is voting two minutes, and I I don't disagree. I mean, stories are thirty seconds or less, um, f you know, for a reason. <laughs> people have short attention spans, so keep it keep it short, people. And also ask your um, ask your specific clientele because I'm making some generalizations here that I invite you to investigate and push back on. You know, go ask your you know ask your clients. Gee, if I was going to create them, you know. If you're making jewelry, for example, I might be very happy to watch that for 10, 20 minutes. I don't know. You know, ask your clients and, and do some research. Don't guess. So I I think that's it. Out of respect for timeliness, I think we're done. And I really uh, wish you all luck and uh, have a wonderful rest of your summer. 
Okay. Thanks, Kate. And uh, just a reminder, our next webinar will be on Tuesday, August 6th, the topic, Digital Marketing Maze, with Catalino and Clark as the presenters. On behalf of SCORE, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's live webinar, and please remember to fill out your evaluations, which have been sent via email. In closing, I'd like to say a big thank you again to Kate, and everyone have a nice evening. Thank you.